Well, greetings, everyone. Welcome back to the How to Beat Halo Wars Guide. This is going to be a walkthrough of tips and strategies on how to really excel in the Halo Wars campaign. This is Mission 2 Relic Approach. The, we've secured Alpha Base, and the Covenant are doing some bizarre activity. Way off yonder, and we're going to figure out what's going on. <clears throat> if you want to know all about this guide and see more missions, there is a playlist for you to check out on YouTube. So the first thing is the game wants you to build a base, which is what we'll do. <clears throat> And um, actually kind of cool if you play this mission in co-op, uh, the primary player, player one, would, would be green, and then player two would be uh, blue. And it's kind of cool if, if player two builds, like, say, a supply pad, it actually will be blue instead of green. It's actually quite cool. You can get a kind of a colorful base going on. While these buildings are being constructed... Just walk around and, and pick up some of these crates. There's quite a bit of crates around here. And just keep in mind that these supply pads build extremely fast. It's not the regular build time. After that, it's going to want us to build a barracks. And this will build pretty quickly. It's going to want us, I think, to build like five marine squads. We need to establish a larger military presence on the ground. <clears throat> You know, I remember when this game first came out, being completely just blown away with how awesome this game is. It really was, and still is, quite incredible to play. Uh, I'll tell you now, there is the hidden black box, I believe. It's somewhere around these parts. I guess I was mistaken on the black box location. I do believe this is where the skull appears um, when you complete the objectives for the skull. Hence the flashing light. So the front gate's going to open. So throughout the course of this mission, there's going to be Covenant spirit drops. They're going to be dropping um, Covenant infantry around your base. So be, just be prepared for that. Uh, we can build turrets on this mission. But before you head out, I would recommend... Oh, so they still do build extremely fast even after um, this little tutorial. So I build a second supply pad. We'll build a reactor. I would also expand the base. And then uh, if you want to go pretty fast here... We have a reactor. You could either save up and wait till 1,200 resources and upgrade the reactor or build a second one that does take up a second slot. I'm a big fan of more supplies, so I would upgrade all these supply pads. Wait till you get to 1,200 resources and then build a vehicle depot right here. And since everything builds so quickly... Um, this is going to happen really fast. There's a couple of Covenant bases in here uh, that can be destroyed. The first one is, I think, right here. We'll discover it here in just a moment. The game kind of holds your hand throughout this mission. And then after this, you can kind of almost do anything you want as long as you complete the objectives for the rest of the campaign. Uh, your Marines have a grenade throw ability, which is their Y ability. If you're on PC, it's the R key. Uh, you can either do select them individually or select uh, all your Marines. And all the Marines will um, use their grenades at the same time. It's a little bit different of behavior than what is in Halo Wars 2. Halo Wars 2, you have to do them individually. Halo Wars 1, they do them all at the same time unless you explicitly tell them to do it individually. Now, the game's going to tell you getting into cover is great, and I agree. Cover is uh, it buffs your defense, and it gives you a line of sight bonus, too. And that'll really help you out take out these units in these towers. We have a ton of resources now, so I'm going to upgrade our reactor. 
and upgrade this. <clears throat> we can build our vehicle depot once this upgrade is done, but we're going to see uh, drop ships here soon. So I'm going to get my turrets ready. Also go for some of these crates. And it looks like these marines need a little bit of help, so I'll do a Y ability. Uh, I guess that's the ram. I'm so used to the uh, anvil round from Halo Wars 2. You can also tell your marines to get into these towers as well. Just don't forget to keep take your marines out of there if you want to continue with your whole force. And you can always build more marines if you see fit. Now, you can move your global rally point to where uh, when marines are uh, finished training, they can go somewhere. You can either do it by going to your powers wheel and selecting your global rally point, or you can press the Y key on PC. Build our vehicle depot now. And it's probably best to start getting some of the upgrades from the Marines. New blood is great. See, we're seeing here our first uh, drop ship. And I'm not sure if the game actually tells you that this happens. They kind of just show up. Uh, uninvited. And it looks like these are uh, a little bit difficult for my Marines to handle here. In regards to the turrets, you can upgrade the turrets to be anti a specific unit type. So I'm going to get the flame mortar upgrade. This will add a uh, flame shot, and that's really good uh, against infantry. If these uh, hunters are alive when this finishes, you'll see it here. There it goes. So it's going to be great against some of the opposing infantry. <clears throat> the next upgrade is RPG ability for the Marines. The rockets can fire from a longer range than grenades, and I think they do a lot of damage as well. Uh, in the vehicle depot, if you really want to go quick through this mission, you want to get some scorpion tanks. It's just kind of a... Uh, wouldn't necessarily call it a shortcut, but definitely a really fast way to complete this mission. Because this is mostly uh, infantry that we'll see here throughout, uh, throughout this mission. Also, if I'm remembering correctly, once Forge loses all of his health, uh, he the Warthog will be destroyed, but Forge will, if, instead of being in a vehicle, he'll be on foot. And Forge is much better in the vehicle. So try to keep Forge in the Warthog as long as possible. You, Forge actually can't die. It's kind of a meme in Halo Wars. The announcer will just yell and say, Forge is down. Um, and you just need to go by and, and get some line of sight to get him to be back up. There is a secondary object objective to kill 20 Jackals. I am going to do that. That uh, should unlock the skull. Let's get these marines in this cover here. We can see this is the base. Uh, let's put the rally point here. I'll build another turret. And uh, the next scorpion tank. And the rockets for the marines are going to do a lot of damage to that base. Almost does more than the Scorpion tank. Let's see what we got here. So just more infantry. Just make sure you have your turrets and then get the anti-infantry upgrade. I think this is the ideal base uh, orientation or build for this mission. Four heavy supply pads, a double reactor, barracks, and a vehicle depot. But your mileage may vary depending on your your play style or however you want to approach it. There, there really is no wrong way to build your base in this mission. If you want to get the objective for getting all the jackals, they may be hiding on uh, like the mountaintops. Pretty much doing a, a full sweep of the map will get you all of the jackals. There are a few imprisoned... UNSC, I don't know if it's infantry or if it's warthogs. One location is here, and the other one 
is here, and there's a third one right there. And we are going to do that for this mission. You don't have to. It's not a requirement. Oh, see, so they just go ahead and flare them. And this is the kind of the same what we saw from Alpha Base. Your infantry can go through here. Vehicles cannot until you destroy the uh, the shield barrier. And it's just a way to get some warthogs. So it's, it's groups of two. We'll head over here and get the other one. Now you have a 30 population pop limit. Uh, you should still be able to get all of the warthogs with max pop. You'll actually go over max pop. So if you want to really get the most out of uh, rescuing these warthogs here, fill up your pop cap before you start doing this. And now we'll head over here. I'll set my rally point over there too for the new the new uh, tanks that are being built here. And if you play on a higher difficulty on, on Legendary, these spirits come more often with more units. Um, so when I played through this with a friend, what we ended up doing was one person paid attention to the economy and the base. The other person would work on doing these objectives and kind of clearing out the map. Oh, look at that. She'll drop uh, reinforcements. That's nice. And the game will continuously throughout the campaign have these smaller optional objectives. As you can see, it's going to drop some more warthogs. And uh, I'm now at 33 pop. Now that flare on the map means that the skull has spawned right around here. So I'll take one of our warthogs and we'll head over here and we'll see if we can claim it. I wonder if he can actually drive around here. Looks like he can. Let's see if we can... Uh... According to the comments, I completely... There it is. I completely missed the first one. Let me go grab this. You can pick it up. There we go. The Grunt Birthday Party. Very good. Let's move forward. We'll go over here, and then we will uh, go to the Relic Approach. Destroy the Covenant methane machinery. As we all know, the Grunts are big into the uh, the methane. This will do some damage. If you're looking to get like the par score throughout the uh, campaign, I know there's a few achievements related to acquiring the par score. Um, this is a great way to boost your par score. Doing all the optional objectives. Also, being in part-time helps as well. All units. It's interesting you don't see health bars on this machinery here. I guess it's just a little bit unusual. All right, so we'll send our Marines through here. We don't really need to have all of our stuff kind of in one location. So I'll send all of our vehicles forward. The infantry will go through here. There's the black box. <clears throat> so we'll pick up that. These Marines can take that out. I guess that's just if you want to send like a forge hog through there. I accidentally chose all, all units there. You also get to use your heal and repair in this mission. So if you want to kind of protect some of your warthogs or some of your weaker units, you can do that. Also, I should have said this earlier. If you destroy this Covenant base... You actually can build here if you want a second base to either like reduce the distance of your reinforcements heading over there 
or uh, you just want some more production. This mission isn't hard um, in terms of like how how difficult it is to get going and building your buildings and training your units. This mission kind of is still, again, holding your hand. It's not until, I'd say the next mission is really when the difficulty starts to, to ramp up. Arcadia City and the Scarab mission are notorious for being the most difficult. Now this game does love to flare at you a lot, so just uh, be ready for that. <laughs> We'll just go over here and make sure there's no Covenant units that we're clearing out. And then I'll send the Scorpions in. The mission will end when you enter in. I think you got to destroy this power source here. And following this mission, you're going to get a really cool cutscene. Not every mission has the blur cutscenes. But uh, in the beginning, you see them more often than not. This is where your uh, marine rockets will come in handy, but it looks like the scorpion tanks are going to take care of this before everyone else can arrive. Which is fine. There we go. The detonator is destroyed, and we will now head into the next mission, which will be Relic Interior. I've got the professor aboard. Well, there you have it. That's going to conclude this mission. Thank you so much for watching. We did uh, all the optional objectives, which is good. Again, there is a playlist for all of the missions in this campaign. So be sure to check that out. And there's a ton of stuff on our YouTube channel on tips and tricks on how to get better at both Halo Wars and Halo Wars 2. That does it for me. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you, James.